Good rising, brethren. This is Big Judah coming to you guys from California. Before I begin, give all praises to Most High Yahweh. Acknowledgement to the earthly mother. Who was wisdom? Who was the Holy Spirit? Acknowledgement to Yahweh Shai. I pray the Most High blesses us lesson this evening. Gives us more knowledge and understanding of the events of the past. In order to understand events that are currently happening on the earth. So we get a much better understanding of the things that are soon to come on the earth. Rather, we get into another book that's going to confirm the prophecies of Joel 2. And uh, just confirm the things that the Most High has been showing us. He's going to confirm the, how special these lands are. And he's also going to show you how your enemies cannot be trusted. When your enemies have gone out of their way to hide your history, to hide your traditions, how do you trust that same enemy to give you the your records back, to approve for you to see your information to approve for you to be able to interpret the information the way that you see fit. Check this out. We're going to get into this book right now. The Secret of the Illuminati. Now we know what the, uh, you know, what the priesthood of Mahan and his lackeys, what they do. They see a book like this and always, first thing, it's, you know, it's of the devil devil worship, you know, but if the devil wants you to go off, would if the devil make this information easily accessible? I mean, hello, the devil's in it. He's here to supposedly trip you up. The devil is here to make you go sideways when you should go straight. So it would make sense that the devil would make his information easily accessible not cost a lot of money. In fact, probably make it free. Now, let's take a look and see how much this book is. The Secret of the Illuminati by Elizabeth Van Buren. Hardcover, 1982. Very rare. They're asking for $4,000. Now, why would the devil ask for four grand? four G's for a book that's going to make you go off. Unless this information is information that, you know, the devil supposedly really doesn't want out and he makes it very difficult for you to get your hands on it. That makes more sense to me. See, when, 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 you know, the enemy wants you to have something, he'll make it easily accessible give it to you for free or very cheap. You know, he'll break it down for you so you don't got to think. He'll break it to give you the correct understanding so that, you know, you, you think you got everything perfect. Because it's always about, you know, having everything concrete and easily understandable for the devil, right? When the priesthood of Mahan. Don't you want to know if tonight when you go to bed, for sure you're going to heaven. Because you're going to accept my breakdowns. You're going to accept the way I've interpreted your scriptures. That's the way they've been doing things. Bibles aren't very difficult to get. Book of Mormon is not very difficult to get. Okay? The sealed portion is not, easy, not, not difficult to get. So there's a lot of these books I said, they, they, they'll let you get the information. But they're also going to give you their breakdown. You're going to see some great understanding right here and the secret of the Illuminati. And it's going to confirm what the Most High has already showed us about Joel 2. You don't see very many people talking about Joel chapter 2, talking about those being representing the Americas and how the Most High is going to sweep this Northern army. You know, don't get all caught up with the North and South and whatever else. Those are all translations. He's kicking off an army. And as soon as he kicks this army off the lands, the lands start to revert back to how they were before. They start to produce for our people once again. 
starts to become like that heaven that it was before the Gentiles stepped foot on our lands. And that's going to be confirmed right here, among other things. I'm sure many of you guys have heard about the, the gold sun disk that they found when they uh, took over the Incas, or they, they tried to find, or they heard about. They're going to talk about that and where it really originated from. They're going to make connections as to where a lot of these a lot of these artifacts that the Spaniards were searching for, where they really came from, where they originated from. That's going to be talked about here in this book as well. Now, is this book that expensive? Because these types of you know topics and this type of information they don't want you to have, they don't want you to get exposed to. It says you can get the information, you know, you can do the research yourself. You can study to show thyself approved. Okay? <clears throat> so let's check it out. We're going to start here at the top, okay? But probably the greatest of all the treasures, and one about uh, which most has been written, is that of the Incas. When Pizarro and his conquistadors, conquistadores marched into Peru and took captive the Inca emperor, they were dazzled by the great wealth the gold and precious jewels, which met their eyes wherever they turned. But as Pedro Ciesa de Leon wrote 15 years later, if when the Spaniards entered Cusco, they had not committed other tricks and had not so soon executed their cruelty in putting Atuhualfa to death, I know not how many great ships would have been required to bring such treasures to old Spain and is now lost in the bowels of the earth and will remain so because those who buried it are now dead. You know, had the Spaniards actually came in and actually, you know, treated the people right and didn't just come in, you know, with their cruelty and rape, rob, and murder from Jump Street, they might have gotten more gold than they did plunder. Okay? But that's not in their hearts. You know, truth and being friendly is not in their hearts. It's all about bloodshed and getting what they want. But see, now that they've gotten what they want, now all of a sudden they push a religion of supposed peace. But when you look at their history, there's been absolutely nothing peaceful about them at all. <clears throat> so it's not, you know, with this devil and with his, you know, with his lackeys. It's like, don't look at, don't listen to what they say. Look at their actions. Look at what they do. Look at what they've done. That's why they've gone out of their way to hide their history. Because they know that their history is nothing but, you know, rape, robbery, and murder, and stealing. That's all that it is. It's never been about love and caring and, and you know, get along with your neighbor. and any of that. That, That's not been anything that's of any importance to them whatsoever. Ciesa de Leon, a soldier priest was told by the Indians in Peru that altogether the Spaniards shipped vast amounts of gold and silver to old Seville. The conquerors only took a fraction compared with what remained in secret places. The Indians said, the treasure is so concealed that even we ourselves know not, know not the hiding place. So this, this stuff is just so concealed. That's the most high. He's like, okay, my, my people are going to go into slavery. They're going to forget who they are. I'm not going to let, you know, these barbarians get their hands on all these treasures. I'm going to conceal it. I'm going to keep it away until the appropriate time, until it's time for his people to raise themselves back up or be risen back up by the Most High. You go back to Genesis 15 and 13. It talks about how after we go through our 400 years of punishment, that he's going to restore us. Let's get that real quick. See, these are all these prophecies that these other nations just refuse to talk about. But see, they were the ones that were going out of their way trying to get, you know, our, our treasures. Genesis 15 and 13. And he said unto Abraham, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. And afterward shall they come out 
with great substance. What's that great substance? We always assume that it's something that the Gentiles have. But as you can see here, a lot of our treasures have been hidden. It's going to, talk, it's going to tell you where they've been hidden. And it's they're waiting for us. These treasures have been waiting for us to serve our punishment so that once we are <clears throat> you know, brought back up by the Most High, once we are restored by the Most High, He's going to give us that great substance once again. This is confirming that the other nations didn't, didn't get a hold of the great substance, but that the Most High hid it. Since Pizarro had been informed that there existed a subterranean passageway running for many miles under the Andes by means of a complex system of tunnels, one arrived in an enormous cavern in which the total wealth of the Inca nation was secreted. So you got these enormous caverns, okay? These huge complex systems. They were not built by the natives that were there. Because they're going to tell you that this, these spaces have been here, you know, way before the people that were there at that time. It says Pizarro stated that he would murder Atahualpa unless he was told the whereabouts of the secret depository. Now, check this out. Check out, like I said, you can be talking about people, oh, you guys... You guys believe in magic and things like that. We had great technology. You know, if you look at, was it, if it was a Jasher or Jubilees, when they were looking for Joseph and they had us, they had that machine that actually told them that Joseph was in the room with them. They were they had GPS back then. You know, if you, if you remember that, that whole sequence when uh, they were having, when they were going back and forth with Joseph and the brothers, those are things that are hidden from the Bible, you know, but in, in Jasher, I want to say I'm almost positive it's in Jasher, that they had a machine that let them know that Joseph was actually in the room with the brothers. So it shows you that other nations would call it magic, could have been technology, whatever it was, we were way more advanced than the other nations, way more advanced than these Spaniards that were here. The, reason, the only reason they were to take us down was because the Most High had turned his face away from us. And now that he's turned his face back to us, we're going to have that technology restored back to us. We're going to have our information restored back to us. We're going to have our spiritual understanding restored back to us. Now check this part out. In despair, oh, Pizarro stated that he would murder Atahulfa unless he was told the whereabouts of this uh, of the secret depository. In despair, the Inca queen went to seek advice of the priests of the sun, and she was told to look into the black mirror, kind of like scrying, right? In this magic mirror, she saw the future fate of her husband. She realized that it would not matter whether she disclosed the entrance to the tunnels or not. Her husband would die in any case. The queen therefore commanded that the entrance be closed. The doorway in the cliff wall of the chasm was shut with the aid of the high priest. The chasm itself was filled in with rocks till it was uh, level with the surrounding country. Bushes and grasses were planted over the new surface. Kind of sounds like a lot of uh, things with the Grand Canyon. How they, you know, they first of all went into it, found these caverns. Is that where, is that where some of this stuff happened? Is that where some of these places, you know, these things, our treasures are hidden? And then, you know, they could find it before, but suppose they can't find it now. They can't find these entrances now. I said, these kinds of things were going on, not just in the Andes, but they're probably going on all over the world. Wherever the Gentiles were showing up, we were probably instructed to hide our treasures until, a time, until our, you know, the, re the resurrection of our people. We were going to, going to go through being the Valley of Dry Bones. We we're all going to be dead to the world, dead to our traditions. So all of our um, all of our treasures were going to be hidden until we went through the 400 years, and then we would get that great substance once again. See, this book right here is confirming the correct understanding that's actually in the scriptures, but giving you more understanding, showing you this is a worldwide thing, worldwide event. Okay, the queen therefore commanded. Well, we got that right there. We already read that part. Let's continue. 
But, you know, people will kind of look at that black mirror and see people, and you're going to tell, you can just hear, the people who are down with the priesthood of Mahan first thing, oh, that's witchcraft. We don't do witchcraft. We don't do that kind of stuff. You know, how do you know? How do you know what we were into? How do you know what types of, you know, technology or what you would call magic we had? See, you're so quick to sit here and want to judge other people when you don't even have the books and the information because they've hid it from you. That's why this book is four G's because they think, hey, you know, you're not going to spend that kind of money on this kind of a book. It's, it's, it's of the devil. Well, it's letting you know about your history. It's letting you know, giving you just little glimpses about the technology that you had before. See, people will see these types of things and just kind of gloss over it. Just like in Jasher, when they were using that machine that located Joseph. Some kind of a GPS kind of reminds you of a X-Men and Professor Xavier being able to find the mutants. We're, oh, wow, it's amazing. They, they came up with that all on their own or they get that out of Jasher. They get that out of your books. They get that out of your information. That's exactly where they got it from because they didn't have access to this kind of technology. So therefore, they find out what we had, throw it in their movies, put some white faces on it, and make it seem like it's theirs. But these are things that were happening. Hey, this is this, this these are things that were happening with the Spaniards. You don't hear that the Spaniards talking about this stuff. They're not talking about how technologically advanced, you know, the Incas were. You see what I'm saying? They're hiding all that. And they also hide it in a four thousand dollar book. The Inca was brutally murdered and his queen committed suicide. Pizarro never discovered the treasure and it is rumored that only a handful of Indians still possess the key to the secret of the Andes, which they guard faithfully. There is a belief amongst the Quechua Indians that time moves in a cyclical manner and that the past shall be again. Nothing new under the sun. You know, what has been will be. Sounds just like the Hebrew Israelites. Just like what we talk about in Ecclesiastes. Same type of thing. Okay? And that the past shall be again. They say that one day a new golden age will dawn for the Incas. And the Indians await the return of these kings of the sun. Certainly there is a tradition that the treasure of the Incas will lie hidden until the last vestige of Spanish rule disappears from both the continents of North and South America. There's your Joel chapter 2 and the sweeping of these Gentiles off of the lands. So that shows you that these Gentiles have no understanding of the Bible. This shows you that the, there's great treasures, great substances, just like it talked about in Genesis 15 and 13, that have been hidden. And once the Gentiles are swept off the lands, those treasures will be restored to the original people. doesn't matter who they say are the original people. It matters what the Most High says are the original people. So we'll see who's, gonna, who's right. We're going to see who's going to get swept off the land. We're going to see who's still going to be here. So y'all keep saying, oh, America's going to be destroyed. America's going to be nuked. Yeah, right. Most high doesn't give you guys that kind of power. You had your time. You had your blessing, which was a sword. And now the Most High has taken that away from you. You can't destroy these lands unless the Most High allows you to. These lands were here way before you. And they'll be here way after you're gone. The Most High is about restoring his people and his lands. That's what you get out of Joel 2. So should I believe the Most High and what's written in Joel 2? Or should I believe you Gentiles? I think I'll be rolling with the Most High and what he says. So again, certainly there is a tradition that the treasure of the Incas will lie hidden until the last vestige of Spanish rule disappears from both the continents of North and South America. So see, all you Christians, you're part of this, you know, these vestiges of Spanish rule. Your Christianity comes from Catholicism. You practice Easter. You practice 
Christmas. You, you, you know, worship white Jesus. You ignore the true Hebrews. You start, you know, your prophecies way on the letter N. You skip everything that you've done in the past. You don't take, um, you don't take responsibility for anything your ancestors have done. You are exactly the same. And this is that you know that until the last vestige of Spanish rule disappears from both the continents of North and South America, you use Christianity to enslave the Northern and the Southern kingdom. You use Christianity to uh, act as if you're never going to have to pay for the sins of your fathers. But you do it all in vain because the Most High is exposing you and he's bringing out all of this truth. So this is huge, absolutely amazing. You know, I said that just shows you that it goes hand in hand. Your removal off the lands goes hand in hand with the restoration of the Israelites. Now you see why they're, every other day they're, they're promising more money, more weapons for the Ukraine. Doesn't make any sense because why exactly are they doing all this? Sounds like they're trying to, you know, there was an article that Paul talked about today about how their, their stockpiles of weapons here in the Americas are getting dangerously low because they're giving away all their weapons to the Ukraine. They're removing them from here to uh, over there in Europe. That goes hand in hand with what you just saw. That goes hand in hand with what you're seeing right now with, they know that they're going to be swept off these lands. They know that the Most High is going to remove them. Just like he brought them over here, he's going to be escorting them right the hell up out of here as well. They know there's nothing they can do about it. They know there's no negotiations. So they're quietly removing themselves, their weapons, anything they possibly can off of these lands because they know pretty soon they're going to have to go. They know about the eclipse that's coming in two years. They know that big events are on the way. They know they're getting exposed every day. That's why they don't say anything. That's why they continue with the same lies every single day. Because there's no truth in them. None at all. So the secret of the labyrinth, the network of tunnels, which it is believed stretches for hundreds of miles beneath the towering snow-capped mountains or under thick forest goes back far further than the age of the Incas. The tunnel system was already there when the great civilization sprang up. One wonders whether the high priests of Cusco knew the origin of the passageways and who were the ancient builders of them. Okay, we got the builders again. We got masons. We got all these things that have been built that, you know, they don't talk about. They hide. Just like when you think about Lord of the Rings and you're looking at all the, you know, they got the dwarves when they're underground and they're looking at all these great, you know, holes and things that they built under the ground, underground. They know that those things really exist. They've seen them. They know that these, these places exist. That's again, why they put them in movies. Certain places I'm sure they can see. Certain places I'm sure they can't see. I'm sure there's plenty of places they're, they're not you know, privy to see and the Most High will not allow them to enter. So we got to understand the Most High is in charge of all of this, not the Gentiles. The Mysteries of Ancient South America, Harold Watkins relates that in a rare MSR a chronicle of the time of the Conquistadores, it states that in the Sun Temple at Cusco, there was once enshrined a white stone. Now, check this part out. You guys thought that the Omen and the Thuman, you know, came from the Book of Mormon. They had that a long time ago. The Incas had this. They had the Omen and the Thuman because this, again, comes from our people. So, like I said, these, this is why the book is so expensive. This is why they don't want you reading these types of books because this shows you that... that you know, this information in the Book of Mormon, yeah, they're going to give you some of it, but trust me, these are coming from ancient writings that they're not letting, they're not easily letting out. The Most High 
is giving these books to us and giving this information to us. And the only way that we're able to get this information is by working together as a nation. That's the only way that we can get this information and bring it out. We're all working together to bring it, to bring this information out and to be a light to the world. So just know if you've been supporting me and everything else, just know that we've been working. This is all us working together. And it's a beautiful thing. This is the way it's supposed to be. It's the way that we're supposed to be working together. You know, I had talked about going and buying land and working, you know, getting land, whatever else, but the Most High didn't move me to do that. But he has moved me to, you know, get resources, get this information. And then if I don't bring it out all at one time, I wait for the Most High to show me when it's time to bring it out. I'll open up a book. It'll come to a certain point and it'll speak to things that we need to talk about on this day. Because that's, that's the Most High sending the angels. Our angels are working with us to give us back this understanding. These are our records. You ain't going to get this information from the Gentiles. You're not going to get them reading these books and giving you the, giving us the correct understanding. They're not going to put the, you know, the puzzle pieces together to say, this, you know, this information is for the Hebrews. This is for the Israelites, that they were the originators of this information. They're not gonna. They're not gonna break that. They're gonna talk about Atlantis. They're not gonna talk about Lumeria. They're not gonna talk about Mu. They're not gonna talk about any of that. They're gonna say all oh, that was all made up. Because it wasn't theirs in the first place. They've only been set up to hide your records. They've only been set up to hide your information. So long as you trust them, that's all they're going to do to you: keep you blind, and keep you ignorant. The Most High did not raise them up. He's raising up his own people. Now let's continue. Okay. Uh, let see. It states that in the Sun Temple at Cusco, there was once enshrined a white stone, which possessed great oracular powers. Again, powers. Oh, here we go. Just, as I said, just remember all the people that said, oh, Big Judah, he's practicing witchcraft. He's in his house practicing witchcraft. He's doing all these things. He's do, he's he's a son of the devil. He's this, he's that. I'm like, oh, okay. All right. Well, you just remember that. Okay? Because the Most High is about to expose all these people who've been talking all this mess. He's going to show them, he's going to show you who they work for. Because this, this information, this understanding is your history. That the priesthood of Mahan, the Catholic Church, has gone out of their way to hide from you. And they're hiding it from you even today. So again, uh, the Sun Temple of Cusco, there was once enshrined a white stone, which possessed great oracular powers. By means of this stone, the future might be seen. It was called by the Incas Oracrunu, reminding one of the Urim and the Thummim the two mysterious stones which were set in the breastplate of the high priest of the Israelite temple. Harold Walken suggests that the derivation of the latter name uh, was the breastplate of the Egyptian goddess of truth, Thymie, who was the same uh, as the Greek goddess Themis. doesn't matter what the Greeks and the Egyptians called them. This was our information. These were our stones. These are our breastplates. Don't care what the other nations call it. Don't care what they have to say. So all the way back, the Incas had access to the Umim and the Thummim, and they were able to use these stones in order to see the future. This is not something that came from, see, that's why they put it in the Book of Mormon, because then they'll say, oh, don't read that book. Oh, my God, oh, that, that book says that black skin's a curse. And then you're so you're so easily persuaded you won't read it. Not knowing that that information, those stones, and the ones that were using them were your priests. How do you think that you know? Who who were the ones that were that they went to when they needed to know the future? Who were the ones that they that they went to when they had dreams and they couldn't figure them out? Were they doing just any nation? Hell no! Nah. They're like, hey, go get me the brews. Go get me the Hebrews. Go get me Joseph. He, he can tell the future. Just like when he was in jail. Says, hey, bruh, you're about to die. 
Yeah, I know you, you know you you think you're gonna you're gonna make it out and you ain't making it out. Get your get your stuff in order. You're about to die. Yeah, we need we need to get him. If Pharaoh's like, hey, give me him. I got this dream. He needs to figure this out for me. Daniel, I got, you know, got this dream. Can't no none of my people can figure it out. Give me Daniel. They knew who to go to. Oh, this hand showed up and it's and it's over here writing stuff. I can't figure it out. None of my none of my advisors can figure it out. Hey, get Daniel over here. Hey, read this for me. What is this? What does this mean? Fast forward now. Now you got the Incas right here. They got they got black mirrors telling telling the queen the truth, telling her the future. Got priests right here who got rocks that they can use, umum and thumum, to figure out the, to figure out the future. Does that not sound like magic to you? So that's okay. You can accuse me of, of witchcraft, magic. I don't care because that is what my forefathers, I'm sure, were accused of by Gentiles too. Because this information, this technology was not given to the other nations. So it's going it's to look pretty crazy to someone who doesn't know how these things work. But it's going to look like a, just, a, just a walk in the park for the people of the book. Because this is ours and it was given to us in the first place. So check this out. It is said that the White Stone was destroyed by the Catholic fathers. There you go. The Catholic priests destroyed the stone. Why did they destroy the stone? Because it wasn't for them. They got no benefit out of it. They knew who it was for. And they didn't want us to have it. So it says, again, it is said that the white stone was destroyed by the Catholic priests who accompanied the conquistadores and who were the cruel perpetrators of the Spanish Inquisition. And they were going after our people in the Spanish Inquisition. Don't care what they show us on in their movies. Don't care about that. I know we know exactly who they were going after. They were they were just destroyed our Om and Thummim right here. They were destroying our people, destroying all of our information. They believe that the worship of the uh, Irukranu obstructed the conversion of the Indians to Christianity. There you go. Take away your history. Take away your traditions. Accuse them of witchcraft. So like I said, you just look at the ones who that was the first thing that they did that shows you that they're in league with the Catholic priests and trying to keep you away from your history. Got no proof. They're not in my house looking at look, watching me perform performing spells and witchcraft. We're just looking for our history. But they did do exactly what the Catholic priests have done this whole time. So again, they believe that the worship of the Urakranu, or following your own traditions, obstructed the conversion of the Hebrews to Christianity. And so on a certain day, the Padres gathered the Indians together around the house of the sun, and they read prayers with them, after which they built a fire and burned the white stone. So you, but these are the people you trust to give you the correct, uh, the correct books, right? These are the ones that you, you that you trust are giving you all your records back. Hey, the sixty-six books—that's all you need. These these people, right? The eighty books or whatever else, or they think you know. Like I said, they got a little bit of this information. Throw a little bit of that in the Book of Mormon, and you think you got something. You think you got all the information. Not even realizing that that's this stuff was already our people were already using it before the Spaniards set foot on these lands, and the Most High is hiding it. He's going to give it back to us, just like he said he does once he sweeps them off the land. Probably the most wonderful of all the legends regarding the sun temple at Cusco is that which speaks of the gold sun, the golden sun disc, which uh, once hung on its walls. The Spaniards never found this sun disc when they ransacked the temple. It had vanished. Where do you think it is? You don't think it's probably hidden in some of these, you know, caverns? underneath the Andes, underneath the forest, waiting for the Most High to return them to their people. There are many stories which tell of this disc. In the East, there is a tradition which relates that in Atlantis, there is a central temple 
with a high domed ceiling in which was set a brilliantly shining sun of gold. It must have been saved from the cataclysm, which saw an end to that civilization. For the Incas, possibly inheriting it from the survivors who had been Atlantean colonials in Brazil, appear to have uh, possessed a beautiful sun disk, fitting the description of the one which had shown in the temple of Atlantis. It would make sense, wouldn't it, that they would save some of these uh, artifacts and they would be popping up in these temples, in these different areas. But, you know, the Gentiles want to say, oh, Atlantis, all that stuff's all made up. That's all fake. Yeah, we're going to trust them. You're going to trust them to tell you the truth? Come on now. Yet another hints that the sun disk existed on a, con a continent in the Pacific. In Secret of the Andes, we are told that it had hung in a Lumerian temple. Lumeria was supposed to have been part of Mu, the civilization from which it is believed by some mankind first originated. And that would make sense too. Okay? When the final uh, portion of the continent submerged between 10,000 and 12,000 BC, close to the time of the cataclysm, which saw the end of Poseidonus, the last Atlantean island to sink beneath the sea, the golden sun disk was brought to the newly formed monastery of the Seven Rays in the vicinity of Titicaca. This lake, the highest in the world, had been formed when the catastrophe which saw an end to Mu, the great motherland, raised the city of Tiwanaku from sea level to a height of over 12,000 feet. See, they're given more history and they're given more understanding. See, the other nations don't say anything. They, they don't know. So if you're going to say you don't know, I'm going to go with these ancient myths instead of listening to Gentiles who says, I don't know, or I have a theory. Yeah, your theories are always pretty much set up to, to just push your narrative. This was the time when the Andes were formed. In the Valley of the Blue Moon, a valley, okay, which had been created by the upheavals, Lord Aramu Maru, the keeper of the scrolls and a master in Lumeria, had directed the building of the monastery. Hidden amongst the high mountain peaks of the Andes, it would remain a secret mystery school in which were stored not only the sun disk, but other treasures of the lost continent. The records and scrolls of past ages, which contained, hold on, uh, which contained the history of the planet, the scientific and spiritual wisdom, knowledge of all time. Here, save from a world whose inhabitants had forgotten the law of love and whose thoughts were directed solely by greed and gain. See, that's the other nations. You guys got your opportunity to, to rule and reign, but you're all about greed and gain. The records, hold on, before I, before I let me just read this part. The records would remain until the, uh, until the day, would dawn when mankind would again understand his true destiny. Okay? And that's what's going to happen with his multi people being restored. That's when the man will, mankind will again realize his true destiny. And it's not just about gains and money and, you know, and status. I want to read a little bit from this right here from Ancient Origins. Okay. Talking about this sun disk. Okay. So you can probably, you can probably look this up here, but I wanted to read a little bit about it because it gives you a little bit more information about the sun disk. Okay. So right before this part right here, it says, among all of the sacred artifacts. Okay. However, one in particular was revered a sun disk made of pure gold. That's the picture right there of the uh, Kore Kancha, originally called Entawasi, key to the gate of the gods. According to legend, this disk was more than an ornamental or even ritual object. It was the key to a sacred doorway called La Puerta de Ayu Marca, or the gate of the gods. It is said that the first Incan priest King Aramumuru took this golden disc to the site of an ancient spiritual city in which the inhabitants could commune with gods. Readers may find this idea strange, but even in modern times, legends from worldwide cultures relate that ancient, even antediluvian uh, civilizations were in contact with gods. In the Christian tradition, God became angry and decided to kill all humans, save Noah and his family and friends. And he tasked him with saving two of each species, the Sumerian, Akkadian, okay, 
and more than 500 other traditions have similar accounts of a great flood and divine beings reaching out to assist a select group of sent, uh, sentient beings. Even in modern times, Mah Mahayana Buddhists meditate upon Bodhisattvas, savior deities who supposedly assist humans. Catholic and Orthodox Christians likewise pray to saints, deified human beings who are closer to divinity. While such saints are alive, they are similarly thought to have the ability to commune with God. Therefore, when Incan legends speaks about an ancient city in which in its inhabitants were closer to Inti, this is universal and unceasing nomenclature. Okay, and the tale should not be dismissed outright because of it. So, talking about it being a keys to a portal. And, you know, you've already seen examples of other things that would be considered like magical. So, hey, who's to say that this sun disk wasn't a key to portals? You know, I said there's a whole lot of things that have been hidden. So it's not easy to just be dismissing things because, because you know, the Gentiles will say, oh, that's not true. We don't believe that. Who cares what you believe? Who cares what you think is true? It doesn't matter because this stuff was before you. Before you stepped foot on, on these lands, these people had this had access to these types of this type of technology, if you want to call it magic, or whatever, they had their their God, their power, they had access to their angels, they had access to the Holy Spirit. This is all stuff that was going on before you stepped foot on these lands. So therefore, your opinion means nothing. Absolutely nothing. So God's gate and the sun temple, a mysterious ink and portal. I got something to look into. Something to research. That's about would remain until the day would dawn when mankind would again understand his true destiny. And now that the Most High is awakening us, we are starting to uh, recognize our true destiny. And it's not about working a nine to five job. It's not about going to school, getting your degree, uh, you know, getting a job, working for 50, 60 years, uh, you're retiring and then dying a couple of years after you retire and think that you've done something. That, that's not what life is about. That's what the society has made us think that it's all about. But that's not what life is about. And now the Most High has to raise up his people in order to lead people to a much deeper understanding of what life is about. The secret knowledge was taken to other parts of the world by the masters of Lumeria under the guidance of the Great White Brotherhood. It was carefully hidden in the Himalayas and other locations, hard to access. Many have been uh, those who have heard of these legends of great hidden treasures and have sought feverishly to find them. But they went with their hearts full of lust for gold and not with the reverence and the desire to help their fellow man with the knowledge gain. And so they did not discover the secret. The secret is guarded by the brotherhood, the illuminated ones. They are the spiritual guardians of the human race who watch unseen and uh, the unfolding of evolution Okay, and who occasionally send out masters to lead man, a man into the light. At one time, they saw that the Incas were worthy of possessing the sun disk. And so for many years, it hung in the sun temple at Cusco. However, the Spaniards never discovered it. It may be that the stories which grew around the fabulous city full of treasure called El Dorado all derived from the legends of the amazing treasure of the Lumerians and the Incas. We're going to stop there. This is our history. We don't, we don't need Gentiles to help us break it down. We will depend on the Holy Spirit that has been sent by the Most High to lead us back to the, to the Father. We see Joel 2 working. We see him sweeping the other nations off the land, restoring his people. Because once he does that, our treasures, our information, our technology, our, as you want to call it, magic, will be restored back to the people. All praise is the Most High, Yahweh. Acknowledgement to the Earthly Mother. Who is wisdom? Who is the Holy Spirit? Acknowledgement to Yahweh Shai. Shalom.